T. rex is mating. Um, I think we could look at probably crocodiles to, to get an idea of that. They would have to, of course, touch their cloaca, which is the, the, the single opening that they do all their business through, both male and female. And um, it's located at the base of the tail, so the male's tail would have to actually wrap under the female's tail. The female's tail would have to kind of turn a little bit to allow the, the male's penis to actually enter the cloaca of the female. And um, it was, uh, <laughs> it must have been quite a sight because these are pretty big animals and, and um, hopefully there weren't too many injuries, but I'm sure that rough sex would, would, have, would, have, would have resulted in some broken bones occasionally. Uh, he seems to be putting an awful lot of weight onto her back just there. Yeah, and his legs have to be quite splayed apart. I mean, to get into that position, it's quite athletic. It's surprising he ever managed to achieve it. Actually, in one of the females that we worked with, one called Sue, there's a, a, a actually a, a portion of the tail that looks like it was stepped on by another Rex. There's three fused vertebrae on the tail, and very very easily could have happened during during a, a passionate moment. Before long, the inevitable happened. The dinosaurs were starting to mate. What would happen next was well known. Eggs have been preserved for many different dinosaurs. Surprisingly, they're never much bigger than a football, even for dinosaurs that ended up 40 meters long. What had to be worked out was how they would have laid them. Take the Diplodocus. They were not the most supple of animals and could not have got very low to the ground. How did they stop their eggs breaking? The series had to come up with a possible solution. In the studio, an egg-laying contraption was about to be put to work. Push, push, there you go, there you go. Go on, keep going. No, it's fine. Push, 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 push. This is turning out to be a very difficult birth. The egg's getting stuck down the tube. It doesn't want to come out, it's not ready yet. Well, this, this is an ovipositor on an egg tube. I mean, we knew that sauropods are very large and they lay hard eggs. So they had to have some way of getting them down into a hole to bury them without them cracking. So this is possibly one solution. They had a sort of muscular tube, a bit like a turtle has, that allowed the egg to pass down and get close to the ground, drop it in, then they could bury in over the top of it. It looks a little bit obscene, but <laughs> it's only a guess. Let's go. Oh, and pull up. It's a boy. <laughs> In the water, something very different was going on. This astonishing fossil of an ichthyosaur was found in Germany. It clearly shows a baby halfway out of her mother's birth canal. This is proof of two things. Ichthyosaurs gave birth to live young and the young were born tail first. OK, thanks. 36 frames. Yeah. The birth was an episode that was recreated in detail. OK, standing by for uh, birthing sequence. Open up on the mouth, close the mouth up. OK, swim through, Mike. Fill in the eye as it goes by. Paul, if you could just get the tail moving a little bit more freely there. So, turn over. And pull harder. Okay, cut. The dinosaurs had been brought back to life and had spawned another generation. The ancient worlds that had been filmed were soon repopulated with extinct animals of every description. With them had returned the entire richness of a world we'd thought we'd lost forever.